Hey, welcome to Travel Tuesday Happy Hour, where we interview dope people doing dope things with one thing in common, the love for travel. We have a great guest lined up. Grab a drink. Stay tuned. What's going on, Travel Fam? If you ever thought about starting a podcast, check out Anchor. Anchor is free. Anchor will provide you tools to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast to multiple streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Everything you need right in one app. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Dope, beautiful women in tech. So don't get fooled by it. And she's a monster at it. So tell us who you are and what do you do? Hi, I'm Ismael Fixama. Or she put the whole accent on there for y'all. Don't of, get course. of course. Of <laughs> course. Um, better known as Izzy to a lot of people because it's, I guess it's hard to say my name. I don't know. But um, yeah, you kind of said it. I work in cybersecurity. I've been doing it for the last eight years now. And um, being, I think I'm probably one of the only Haitian women that I know in cybersecurity. I've met a couple of Haitian guys, but not um, Haitian women that do cybersecurity. So I'm hoping to change that soon. Listen, if you had a call, I'd tell you to pop it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, you know, on one hand, it's kind of cool, but on the other hand, it's like we need more diversity, you know, especially with um, with Haitian women in the types of jobs that, you know, we do, because, you know, if it's not the lawyer, doctor, or the nurse, it's disgrace to the family. <laughs> but but you know what? You know what? You make it possible, right? You, you make it possible that I don't have to follow that track. You know what I mean? Right. And I appreciate you for standing up and doing what you wanted to do. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times we get stuck in that bubble. Our family is telling us you got to do things one way, and you decided to go a route that they don't realize. Computer, I pay you to buy that. You know what I'm saying? Seriously, you know the funny story. Funny story about that is um, the only person that my mom knew that did anything computer science related was one of my cousins, and he might be watching or he's he's on Instagram, so I'm not gonna say his name. <laughs> but um, he was kind of lazy, and so for her, she. <laughs> She always attributed, you know, computer science to people that just like play with computers and fix them. And I was just like, no, nah, um, there's like so many other things that you can do with computers. So they, you know, she deterred me from that. But I'm back to where I originally wanted to be in the first place. So you know, I think it was just my destiny to be in this field. I, I look, man, you you came <laughs> up. I seen part of your journey, and it was amazing because you was like, I'm going for it. I'm gonna do it. And gosh darn it, you here. You know what I mean? Um, you, and, you. and you've been doing your thing ever since. So um, tell us what being Haitian means to you. Ooh, that's such a heavy question because but you like, got it's time. Everything. You got about 20 minutes, so you got time. It's the culture, the food, the people, like the the experience, sometimes the dramaticism of Haitians, like just everything you can think of, like the good, the bad, the ugly, the pride that we have our resiliency, our strength, like Haitians, you know, I think overall we're like not respected worldwide as much as we should be, but like we're, we're dope ass people. And I wish like the world would just recognize how dope we are. And we have like a rich history throughout multiple different countries in terms of, you know, the types of things that we've done to help other countries find their liberation. Look, so tell them, look when you travel, look at the colors on that flag. Colombia, Venezuela. Come on, I mean, let's just let's just Dominican talk about Republic. It. Let's talk about you know, it. I was fortunate enough to live in Georgia when Haiti received their uh, commissary uh, statue for their assistance helping the American government win Georgia back from the British. So mm -hmm. that was something that I was really proud of. I got to see that. So it's like Haitians have such a beautiful long history of like with all these countries that we just don't really get the respect that we deserve. And I think it's about time that we start commanding that. I mean, no other country, no other black country on this planet can say that they've been free for 217 years. That's, that's on period. For real, for real. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
And I'm so from Florida, so like I had to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. So what got you to traveling in the first place? You know, I could never really sit still. Mm-hmm. And I know that sounds really funny because like my mom, my mom and dad used to always like berate me. They'd be like, oh, do drop my shit. And it's weird because I just felt like being in one place was doing a disservice to myself because the world is so large. You know, we only get one life. And so it's my duty as a citizen of the world to like learn about other cultures, to learn about other people, and really just to put myself out there so that when I die and I'm on, I'm on my deathbed, I could say that I had experiences that I've, I've always wanted to have. I've done things I've always wanted to do. So that was really like one of the reasons why I started traveling. My parents hated it because, you know, I started traveling solo and they were like, oh my God, you're going to get kidnapped. I was like, mom, you don't want me. All right. I was like, mom, I'm black. You don't want me. She's like, oh, you don't want me. You don't want me. You don't want me. Oh my gosh. So it's it's bad because not only do I travel for fun, but I also have moved a lot. So they they're sick of me moving. You know, this is like this is like my fourth state in seven years. So they're like, okay, girl, are you are you done or what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. So like how has um how how does being Haitian kind of impact your world travel? Um, I think the way I was raised with the very strict Haitian parents kind of taught me a level of discipline that I don't think I see in some of my counterparts. So, you know, just... You're going to cause a problem in these comments. Oh, man. (laughs) I mean, I'm sorry, but no, like my mom, my mom did not play when it came to education, when it came to like chores. Like I had to get everything done in the house. But I also was very responsible as a child because I can remember like maybe twice my mom ever having to tell me to do my homework or to do my chores. Like I I was always just on top of it. And I think that came because, you know, with Haitians, Haitian parents have very high expectations of their children. And so if you can make your parents proud, then everything else is just going to be cakewalk because (laughs) our parents do. So for me, it was always like, well, shoot, if my mom is cool, then I think I've accomplished a lot. And I, I'm blessed to say that I am continue to make her proud because her expectations have always been high. <laughs> oh, always, always. It never fails. It never fails. So how has COVID-19 kind of impacted life for you? I mean, hmm. I mean IT, we can work from home. We can work from right. We can anywhere, right? <laughs> but um, how has it kind of impacted your travel life, work life, personal life? So travel for me for the rest of these years kind of dead because like I'm not immunocompromised, but I do have like sensitivities to my environment and like my allergies get really bad and I get sick easily if I'm around people that are sick. So I'm I'm not even gonna put myself in that gotcha. in harm's way. Um and I've always been that person that would wipe down the, the plane seat with my my wet wipes before I would even <laughs> sit down. And everybody thought I was crazy for doing that. But now look, everybody's like, you know what? Let me get some wet wipes. Mm-hmm. But um I'm actually kind of sad because I was supposed to go to Greece and to Italy uh actually last week. Mm. So that really hurt me because I really wanted to be <laughs> on some Santorini on a boat, you know. Yeah, I feel you, I feel you. That's <laughs> on my list. Yeah. So uh, there's always next year because I'm I'm just going to probably double up on my trips just to kind of make up for this year not being able to travel. <laughs> you know it. You know it. Anything else? Um, Honestly, work has been picking up more because I do own a business and um, I've been consulting more on the side. Work has picked up on both ends. So it's, it's like I'm in the house a lot more than I used to be. But in terms of like mentally, I've been pretty much okay as long as I go outside every you know day or two, making sure that I exercise, I move my body, um, meditate. So I've been I've been working a lot more on my mental health and my skin <laughs> because <laughs> you know, you glow when I see you. I see you. Hey. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, so yeah. So I was talking to Munchie earlier. Um, I I am a co. I, I was asked to be a co-host on a um a new podcast called uh, Putting My Cheese Back on the Cracker. And mm-hmm. um, one of the things that we're looking for is people that's willing to talk on a subject of mental health and mental wellness, especially meditation and, you know, finding ways to balance life in times like this. So 
I mean, if you got them, definitely hit me up in my DMs and I'll make sure um, I'll see if I can add you to the list. But um, this, that's amazing, you know, because I think um, in this time, it's easy to get stuck, right? Um, yeah. You know, it's easy yeah. to f- find a reason to not get up, not get out of bed, not shower, not leave the house. Um, and, you know, I I got creative during quarantine, right? So this started out of quarantine and um, I've been blessed ever since I started it. So, you know, um, but, but what were you going to say? I was just going to say, to be honest with you, I think sometimes people want to do better with their mental health. They just don't have the tools. They just don't know where to start. And I always say, start small, find something that, you know, is, is little that you can do that brings you enjoyment or peace. Like one of the things that I always did was color. So I, I grabbed like a adult coloring book and I just started coloring. And before you know it, three hours passed and I hadn't really thought about anything that was stressful. The only thing I was focusing on was like, you know, which color am I going to choose next? Okay. So things like that. Um, and just, you know, I know meditation is hard for a lot of people because they can't steal their minds, but just finding something that will kind of take you away from your everyday life, kind of put you in like another reality is definitely something that can help doing puzzles crossword puzzles is another thing if you are the type of person that plays video games i recommend doing that because <laughs> we have to have some sort of mental solace you know, oh. you know during time yeah those gamers are using corona as a reason to be in the, in the basement all day now so like yeah. no it's corona they said this is good to be <laughs> mentally focused um i right. actually have ashley nicole on here the ashley nicole on here who's going to be the host and she asked me to be the co-host for the mental um, mental health and wellness um, podcast. So um, I'm definitely excited to do that. Um, yeah. So I'm, I can't go without asking you this question. Um, okay. <laughs> what are your top five Haitian meals? Like, what's your best Haitian food that you have? Okay, so I'm a very picky eater, and I actually have food sensitivities. <gasps> so, so you can't I know Haitian food. Oh, oh, man. So I don't actually, I haven't eaten Haitian food in probably like two years because, you know, I can't do the rice because I have a gluten allergy now. So, what, but it's still, you live now? I live in Maryland. Oh, you get out of Maryland. Go back to Florida. You didn't have a gluten allergy in Florida, man. <laughs> no, I didn't. It actually started when I was in Seattle, which was weird because Seattle was like, it's a like capital for, you know, clean eating and being outdoors. But, you know, my body just developed it as I got older. But, um... My top one has to be Diddy John Jones. Period. I used to eat it by itself. Like I don't need nothing. <laughs> if I just have like a big plate of Diddy John Jones, I don't need any sauce, no Are chicken. You uh, just so it doesn't have to be made by a specific person, or like you can go make you can make it yourself. I can make it myself. What? I just don't enjoy. Oh, I, I don't to, enjoy making I it. I need to learn how to make so Diddy John Jones. I need to learn how to do that. <laughs> Well, it, it takes a really long time to make it properly. You have to cook the John John for a, a minute. Mm. You have to cook it for a minute. Um, and then you also have to, like, pick through the John John because it oh, has so rock. She real. She real. She, she giving us. Yeah. Listen, listen. <laughs> Everybody that came on here said, do you John John? I don't think they knew how to cook it. You know what I'm saying? Listen, now. If somebody makes me do you John John, I respect them because, like, it takes. And I'm going to say, for me, when I make Diddy John John, it takes me a good five hours. Whew, and okay. Because, you know, you got to cook the John John properly. You got to clean it. You got to cook it. And then you got to actually make the rice. And, you know, Haitian food takes a long time to make properly. Yep. So for those of you that don't know what Diddy John John is, it's black rice. All right. Now, the black rice can be made with seafood. It can be made with beans. It can be made with so many different things. Like, what's your favorite way of making it? Honestly, just plain with Ooh. some peas. With some ple- peas, it's it's just it's just so good by itself. If you if you find somebody that know how to make Z John John properly, you really don't need nothing else. It'll be moist, it'll have flavor. Okay. That's it. So look, man, she just she just gave y'all a tip. <laughs> so um, what do you have coming up? What do you have going on? Um, you know, how can other aspiring um STEM children look up to you and figure out where you're at, what you're doing? Because you know, once again, you know, cybersecurity is no no slouch position, no slouch industry. Um, so how can they find you and, and, you know, learn more about you? So I just posted my Twitter, which is a professional Twitter. So all you'll see me tweet about on there is like anything related to jobs, cybersecurity, anything related to um, 
being a woman in technology. Uh, what's next for me is probably just uh, moving forward with my business, continuing to work with my clients that I've worked with, um, and also continuing to mentor Black women, especially like uh, women who are foreigners in this in this field. So um, one of my goals this year was to help a number of Black women either get jobs into this field or to increase their salaries. And I set a goal of um, somewhere around uh, 500000 was going to be the salary that I wanted to meet, to, to meet or maximize for everyone mm. collectively. Last year, I was fortunate enough to be able to do three hundred and fifty thousand. Hey, where I was, hey, congratulations, congratulations, <laughs> thank you, that's dope. Thank and you. I mean, for those that don't understand and um, understand, like being a woman in a in a white male dominated industry, um, it's impossible. I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but they make it almost impossible to get into those ranges. Um, to yeah. even get into the seventy thousand dollar range, um, to get into the eighty thousand dollar range, and then once you get into the depending on the industry that you're in, um, mm -hmm. banks or versus private sector, um, you know, they make you jump through so many hoops and don't be a person who's opinionated because you're now, you know, the angry black woman, you know what I mean? Exactly. Um, exactly. They're easily intimidated by the intelligence of women in the boardroom and in the office. So that's, that's amazing. That's really amazing. I, I just want to make sure that you understand, like you're doing something great. And that's why I wanted to make sure that, you know, look, you know, um, Anything you're doing, feel free to let me know. I want to make sure I post it. Um, I do manage the Black and Tech Slack channel. Anybody interested in that, let me know. Um, she's on there. Provide, yeah. <laughs> she'll provide you any any mentoring if possible, if she has the time, because you know she's busy now. Um, but yeah, I am busy. Uh, I do make some time to mentor people once or twice every month. Uh, so. Luckily, I just got into an agreement with two people, actually. I'm working on an opportunity for um, training purposes and getting some folks out of Nigeria, opportunities to work with one of the Nigerian agencies. And then I'm also working with a company in the U.S., uh, being able to recruit and place talent within some of the, the biggest tech firms in the U.S. So I'm hoping to be able to help more people. I want you to, um, so we're going to talk after this, but I want you to link up with Quasi, who is a technical recruiter for Amazon. So okay. um, he was on live a couple of weeks ago. Um, that's all he does. He travels around the world to find the best, the brightest, um, you know, people in tech. And what you're doing and what he's doing, I think it goes hand in hand. And this is why I built the right. platform, to make sure that I can connect people doing great things like you are. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm really interested in speaking with him because if he knows anyone, I, I know anyone. I love to like, you know, network and kind of swap contacts because this is how we as Black people elevate. You know, we have to work with each other in order to elevate one another. So, absolutely. Definitely. I appreciate you for jumping on. This was a great conversation. You know, Thank you. and her information is down below. Please follow her. Um, and like I said, I'll have more stuff about what she's doing on going on my timeline. And, you know, once again, thank you very much. I do very much appreciate it. All right. Thank you for having me. And you know, bye, everyone. <laughs> bye, everybody. Another dope conversation. Keep traveling and stay safe. Until next time. Peace.